I'm just laughing. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started at any rate. Mary's still on the road. She's trying to get here. So she's texting me while we're getting here. So we can go ahead and start. I can apologize for her, so that's from Big Mary. I'm sorry. <laughs> she said, are you starting worship? Well, I'm trying to. So here we are. We got some new folks today. Woo! If you do, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, we know Nico. You know, uh, uh, Dante. Dante. I keep thinking Darrell. That's not Darrell. Tony's been out for a while. They, uh, they chopped his arm off and tied it back on. You can see the thing right there. They did that. So his back is feeling better. It's, it's good. I, I enjoy being here and not being in bed, so it's nice to be here. And this Maya is going to start singing, and I don't know really how to. So you don't have to listen to me this time. But we can go ahead and get started. Maya, would you, would you pray for us, please? Of course. Yes, so Father God, thank you so much for this day. Lord, we just love you so much. We just pray even uh, this time of worship, Lord, that you just bring comfort, peace, love, your presence. We thank you, God, that anytime we honor you, Lord, you come. You say where, you know, if you are God, that you're pre in your presence, you will come. So we thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Let's see if I'm being a... It's about right as far as one goes. Two, three, six, five. <laughs>
have to play that Chinese song again.
good. I could do some things. I look real good now. Oh, but God, he is a keeper, okay? Literally a few months ago, I actually lost my grandma. She passed away. It was crazy. And I remember having to graduate the next day. I had to like put on a smile. I had to like act like it was all good. And I was broken. But God is greater than the greatest tragedy you can even face. So whatever you need from the Lord today, I believe as you worship in, even if you don't know the words, the Lord is here to, to meet you. Because he's a good dad and he's in a good mood. So we just bless you with whatever you need today.
Remember, our God is greater, and He's stronger. Come on, and it's He's a Chris Tomlin. And it's a Chris Tomlin song. Come on, Chris Tomlin. Shout out to him. Right on. I do that all the time. I go, what am I doing? I actually get the song started and then notice. <laughs> Eight, seven, four, six. Oh, 
know, I love my husband. My husband does an amazing job being a one-man band. But walking in and seeing a real, no, that's not the right word. Walking in and seeing a, a fuller full. worship band. Wow. Amen. Has Amen. Been a change. Yes. Amen. When we, way back in the day when we used to have a building building, um, and we were, well, the, our first three years, we, first, let me just say this. Squirrel, 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 squirrel. Okay. Squirrel. Excuse me for being late. Pardon me. Please forgive me for being late. It wasn't like I was at home eating bonbons and laying on the couch. As a matter of fact, I was backing out of the driveway and I said, oh man, I forgot to change clothes. So you get what you get. I'm not even sure I brushed my hair today. Um, so, but I got Jesus and I got Jesus and I got Jesus. So, um, Picture on the face on the screen. Yeah, we're all over. Perfect on. What are we doing? I don't know. I said turn it off. Why? Because it's shining in my eyes, and I can't see nothing but stop. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And, uh, but what it did is when it went up like this, it said wah. Oh, so God. inside it was like wah. But we didn't have to empty it. We loaded it. So we, um, we have been working through all of that for this past week. We're not done. We've got to build a fence and do some other things to it. So it also didn't crush our septic system. And it didn't crush our septic system or our water lines. Thank you, Jesus. And so, um, anyway, God was with us with that. But things are still a little bit chaotic. But it will come about. It will come about because... We are fighting from victory, not to victory. We have already won when the cross happened, when Jesus did what he did, we became victory. We are victory. And we have to understand that, and we have to learn to live in that, because if we won't live in that and live in our old ways, then... It'll happen because we are, we are creatures of free will, but when we live in our old ways, we are short-changing ourselves. Because right, right. we have a new life over here. Amen. Right, Come on now. Off right. the chain. Yep. Now, I'm here to tell you, I understand that new life. Yes. yes. Greatly, I understand that new life. I remember who I was, and I think a few weeks ago I gave this little testimony when my brother was here. Um, you know, my brother was gone for 20 years. Um, thank you, State of Texas. And for 20 years, he missed my transformation. Okay? <coughs> 20 years, when he went into prison, I was mean, foul, nasty, an addict. I was hateful. I didn't like people. I didn't like life. I didn't like myself. My picker was broken. All I could do was take bad men. What was broken? My picker was broken. Picker. Can you explain that picker for me? I can. My picker, my picker is the thing that my internal little um, desire nodule oh, right. there you go. Um, was attracted to people, men, that were very dysfunctional for my life. Yeah. You could have a hundred yeah. people in a room. And there would be one alcoholic, and guess who I like? <laughs> okay? So my picker was broke as a result because I wasn't following the Lord and my picker was broke. I had a few failed marriages, damaging, destructive failed marriages. And um, so that's where I was when my brother went into prison. And when he came out, ta-da! Uh, uh. Now, he saw the transformation a little bit at a time through two-hour visits. But how do you get a real grasp of that? He went 24 hours. Uh, one 24 hours. It wasn't in a moment when stress or something, when all the Tupperware fell out of the cabinet, it wasn't a moment like that when in the past I would have not only cussed but made up words because it would have pissed me off and they'd have fallen to the ground and I'd have kicked them off to the side and slammed the cabinet door. You with me? Yeah. You know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then Jesus changed me. He drastically, dramatically, completely, for kingdom's sake, changed me. And my brother said, you are not the same person you used to be. Yes. Thank God. Thank you. And so 14 years ago, I became a McCoy. See McCoy's? McCoy's building supplies. I became a McCoy. And the dysfunction just started. <laughs> <laughs> no, my husband was in for a treat because he had to learn to be healthy and catch up with me. Um, it was, it was. Remember, I've told y'all that. I had a real short man list. I wanted a man because I, I had worked on myself. I had come into a relationship with Jesus. I understood who I was as a daughter to the one true king. And I knew that to be a daughter and to serve him it would be for my life, not everybody's, but for my life, to have a partner with me that was godly like me. And so my man list was somebody that had a goatee, wore shorts and flip-flops, and loved Jesus enough for me to follow him. Yes. You know what my job is? My job is to follow my husband as he follows Jesus. Amen. 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 I love submitting to my husband. Because yes. that's not, I am a slave. That's not, I'm a slave. That is, I am honoring to him. I respect him. Yes. I, um, he is the head of the house. I let him be the head of the house. I want him to be the head of the house. I don't want to be the head of the house. It's not my job to be the head of the house. It's my job to be the wife, the mother, the support. I am his helpmate. And they can, and they know him in the gates. Yes, Proverbs 31. Find 
Yes. Proverbs 31. Value is far above rubies. See? Let me just tell you. When God sets something up, it is off the chain. Uh, somebody took Proverbs out of my Bible. Come on. Proverbs 31. Darren says this all the time. Thank you, though. Um, Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Yeah. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax and, and busily spins it. She's like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. And with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable and her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and her arms and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen or, you know, t-shirts and shorts. Um, and, uh, and purple gowns. Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell the merchants. She is clothed with strength and dignity. And while, she he left says, and while he says she's on her way, she's on her way, he starts the church. <laughs> we added a, a third 24B right there. He goes ahead and starts because she's running late. Um, she's clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Wow. I get to honor my husband. Okay. I get to be this. I get, and I, you know, I, I've read this many Say times, but one. today when I read it, I was like, oh. This is what I thought we was talking about. We might not be here long. <laughs> but if we understand, okay, let me just share this. Okay, we, we, <laughs> he don't know sign language. <laughs> we are one. I, I'm the bride, and he is the groom, and he is responsible for our household, and he answers to God for our household. Amen. Which is why I make choices that make him look good before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay, and then we are in a covenant with the Father. Amen. We are in a tri-fold covenant together we are. And, and it's like a triangle. And God is up here. And Darren is here. Darren is there. And I am here. And the closer we get to the Lord, the closer we get together. Because that's what a triangle does. Are you with me? That's us these triangle at least. Yeah, that kind. Of, whatever he said. <laughs> I asked for a smart one. I did not. I started to say this. I did not. I neglected to put on my list emotionally healthy. I did not spend our list or, or a commodian. Uh, anyway, so but let me let me share this. This is what the church looks like too. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are the bride, and Jesus is the groom. Right. All right. And together, and He does answer for us. Yes, He does. To the Lord, we need to be glorifying to Him. Yes. Keep going. That's right. Oh, well, I was going to say. That. <laughs> That's right. Always good to Amen. 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 It's the one you told me about? Yeah. We'll watch it at the end. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the fact that the top is the father. And the top is the father. So the father is here at the top. Yes. And my husband and I are here. And the closer together we get to God, the closer together we get. Right. Yes. Okay? Right. The goal is to be right here at the tip. Yes. Where it's God with us. He's the Father. And Jesus, he is the bridegroom. And one of these days he's going to come back for his bride to pick up his bride for a date for the wedding. And he oh. answers for us. He makes, he intercedes for us in the mercy seat. He sits right to the Father's right hand. And he hears our prayers. 
we are the way that we get to the Father. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, okay, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to Father, Father but by me. Yes. Not heaven, not the new Jerusalem, not the new heavens and the new earth. We come to the Father by Jesus. There is no other path. There is no other way. It is not all paths lead to the same destination. Let me tell you why this has got to be right in your head. Hear me. Look at me in the eyes. Hear me right now. If you're asleep, I know your ears are listening. So ears, look at me. Hear me. Yesterday in Afghanistan, they went door to door and knocked on the door. And they asked to see your phone. And if they looked at your phone and you had a Bible app on there, they shot you. Right. Oh, my yes. God. Wow. Yes. They went from home to home to home, and the Taliban was destroying Christians. Wow. If you don't understand what it's like to be in a relationship with the Father, to be a part of the bride, to be a good part of the bride, not the concubine. <laughs> Who wants to be a whore? No. Nobody wants to be that. You know, we talked about that a few weeks ago, and I said, I have never in my life preached on Hosea. Never. And I really didn't want to bring it, but Jesus wouldn't let me go. Holy Spirit wasn't going to stop it. Holy Spirit said, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how Hosea went out and got a prostitute Amen. and brought her back in and made her worthy. Amen. I was unworthy to be a part of the bride. Yeah. 20 yeah. years ago, I was a hot mess. Yeah. Now I'm a different kind of hot mess. I get up and the enemy is scared for the day. Yeah. I'm, a good, I'm a good hot mess now. Yeah. Okay? So we are called to be stable and grounded and solid and secure on the rock in our relationship with Jesus because when they show up at the door and ask you, let me see your phone. It's a matter of time. Now let me tell you this. That's when you hand them your Bible. Let me tell you this. If you don't have a Bible on your phone, then today we need to make that right. Amen. Today is the day. If you don't have enough, and I'm just going to be real here, okay? This is a loving call to rise up. This is not a spanking. I am not here to step on your toes. If you don't have an intimate enough relationship with the Lord, that you don't have a Bible on your phone, but you got Candy Crush. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let's talk about it. What are we talking about? We're talking about that there is an intimate relationship. You can't be a poser. <laughs> Did y'all see the cartoon that Darren had rolling by on, with, on the little thingies? It was a guy standing before the Lord, or, or whoever was checking people into heaven. He had his little laptop up, and he said, I'm sorry, your login and password don't match. <laughs> you can't get in, man. It's not about a secret handshake or just knowing how to do the right things. It's not the do attitudes. It's the be attitudes. That's it's right. being that's like right. Jesus. We are looking like the bride that's supposed to look like. Now, Darren, did you have a couple of chimpy wives before me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah did, we did, they, the did they make you look good? <laughs> did they help you save money? They help me make Okay. And you know how he got those wives? He casted a spell. He casted a spell to get a wife. It worked. And it worked. But it wasn't a godly woman because it wasn't a godly spell. No. And that stuff is real in case you didn't know. Yes. It's really real. Because here's the deal. If, if, if God's real, then the enemy's real. That's right. If heaven's real, hell is real. Yeah. Right if, if the power of Holy Spirit to heal, to raise people from the dead, for the lame to walk, the dead to hear. And you know what? I'm just going to tell you bones right now. You need to, your ears need to open. In the name of Jesus, your ears need to open. That's right. I don't even know if you can hear me. But in the name of Jesus, that's what he does. If Jesus was standing here, his ears would be open. If Jesus was standing here, your neck would be healed. If Jesus was standing here, you with me? Yeah. Okay. 
Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Because I've been crucified with Christ, and I don't live anymore, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in this flesh, dressed all like I, you know, like this, and he first married me, I live by faith in the Son of God because he loved me and he gave himself to me. You with me? Yes. That's freedom. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. There are no strongholds in my life. There are no secret sins that I keep hidden in my life. There are no skeletons in my closet that I have. I ain't got no closets. I don't got no skeletons. I don't got no closets. I don't got no secret sins. I don't got nothing. What you see is what you get. And there's a handful of folks that can testify that, have, that are with me sometimes yes. 24 7. I, this is me. Yeah. Country bumpkin. I am a country bumpkin. I am redneck and yeah. I'm redneck and hippie all at the same time, all for the cause of Christ. Yes. You with me? Now, if you don't need to be redneck and hippie, you need to be you. For the cause of Christ. Amen. All for the cause of Christ. And then we look the same. Not redneck and hippie or, or city folk or whatever. But, but we all glory. look the same with the Shekinah glory. We yeah. all look the same in our love for others. God is love. We're called to be love. We're called to be just like Him. Your religion is this. Ready? To take care of the widows and the orphans. Amen. And Come keep on, oneself so unstained right. by the world. Right. Yes. Set apart. Right. Now hear me. That's two charges. That's well, three really. The first one, take care of the widows and the orphans. That's right. Right. If you aren't a part of the bride and have a bridegroom, if you're not a part, you are a widow. If you are an orphan because you don't know you're a son or daughter because you haven't received from Jesus when he died on the cross as you, not for you, as you. Yes. There's a big difference in that little word right there. Amen. Man, there's some deep difference in that. Right. Jesus, somebody does something for you, you're like, well, that's really cool. But if I'm supposed to, tomorrow, Monday, day after tomorrow, if I'm supposed to go before the judge of Tarrant County and he's going to read my file that says, Miss McCoy, you have excessively broken all of the driving uh, laws in Texas. Yeah. You, have, yeah. you have bought and sold uh -huh. drugs and use them and have paraphernalia. Miss McCoy, you have, and he just lists all these things. Okay, I know there's a handful of us that have been there. All yeah, right. right, don't you say the devil, right? But instead of me standing in that courtroom, he didn't go for me, he went as me. I don't even gotta be there. I know. Uh, yes, amen. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's freedom. And then what he did is when he went for me to the court, then he took my punishment for me. And he went, and for three days, he conquered, ready, conquered, sin and death. Genesis 3. Everything Ooh. was great in Genesis 1 and 2. Genesis 3, everything fell apart. All hell broke loose. Everything changed. We went from looking like God to not. Right. And when we did not look like God, when our identity died, remember, if you eat from this tree, you will surely die. They didn't fall over dead that day. But they died in their identity, and they no yes. longer looked like him. And they were hiding with shame and guilt and condemnation. Amen. That's not from God. That's not their original identity. And in their identity, when they became unlike God, the rest of the 6,000 years, that's who we've been. We have been unlike God in our looks, which made us an orphan, because we had no family resemblance. Right. With me? Yeah. There is some family resemblance in the McCoy clan. Yeah. Okay. Then this McCoy clan, this one right here, is the one that came out of the mountains. Yeah. Okay, his kinfolk were the ones that fought over the pig and the girl and the Hatfields and McCoys. And they have a look. Okay, his dad, Derry doesn't as much. He kind of looks like his mother, but not in a weird way or anything. But anyway, his dad has a nose, and we were watching this history something on something, I don't know what it was, and I go, channel. holy cow, that guy looks just like your uncle, yeah. the nose and everything, and then the, the little thing came up, and it was something, something, McCoy, yeah. mm -hmm. wow. like, oh, he's your kinfolk, yeah. <laughs> because there was a family resemblance, when we no longer looked like Jesus, we were orphans, 
Yes. Yes. We no yes. longer look like our original design. We were orphans. That original design didn't come with pain and suffering, didn't come with hurts. I get up in the morning and I'm like, every bone in my body hurts. Okay, It's not going to be that way forever. I know, right? And Jesus can heal me. There's days that I wake up and I'm completely healed. I get a lot done in those days. Um, <laughs> so we have no family resemblance because of the fall in Genesis 3. But it was never, oh, this is so good. This is so good. So, so good. It was never, ever God's intention for us to not look like him. Right. Yes, that's right. right. Come on. Don't get that. Don't resonate that. Oh, it was never his intention for us to not look like him. Well, I think uh, Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus. That wasn't what he created. When Jesus cried at Lazarus' tomb, it wasn't because he died. Hello! All Jesus had to do was say, come out the tomb, Lazarus. All he had to do was say, come on! That's not why he cried. Why would he cry over something you could do? I'm not going to go to the phone company and cry and go, oh, here's my baby. I mean, I might. It's a little bit big. but um, hey, Jesus wasn't crying over something he could do. Jesus was crying because that's not what, it's, it's what we're supposed to look like. We're not supposed to look like dead. Right. Wow. We're not supposed to look like that. We're supposed to look like Him. And so He conquered sin and death. Ready? Because sin brought what? Condemnation. Sin brought what? Condemnation. Death. Yeah. death. Sin brought death. Condemnation. Sin brought condemnation, which brought death. Okay? Sin brought death. And when sin happened and death occurred, we became orphans. And when we became orphans, it's a hard knock life for us. You with me? It is a hard knock life without Jesus. Amen. It's not fun. It was not fun, even though I got high to make it be okay. It was not fun. It was all still there the next morning. So when I became an orphan, Jesus said, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to die as you, not for you. Okay? And then he's going to give me back my identity. He's going to march right up to me and go, you're marked. This is it. I mean, let me just implant this in your heart. Let me renew hey, your yeah, mind. And then watch how your life changes. And then Marty and I, look, stand up. Okay, you're probably going to turn this up. Sorry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Yeah, okay, are you going to get us confused? Probably not. But we look like each other when our heart's the same. Amen. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to look like we look like each other. You're going to get the same answer. You're going to come to me and go, i got a problem. What do I do? And I'm going to go, you need to pray about it. And you're going to go to Martin and go, what am I going to do about this problem? He's going to say, you need to pray about it. We're all going to have the same answers. We're all going to be in the same place. We're going to look different physically, but we're not going to look different kind of glory-wise. We're not going to look different in our heart. We're not going to look different in our mind. Because when we get born again, all the old goes away. Amen. Now, it takes a long time sometimes. There's a few instances where it was just wham, you ripped off the mandate and all the life changed. But those were rare. You know, okay? <laughs> Any man that's in Christ, in Christ, okay? Any man that's in Christ is a new creation. Woman too. And the old is gone and the new has come. Now, it takes us a while to get all that old business off. I was talking to somebody today. One of the reasons I was late to stop talking to somebody. You're a son, I told him. You're a son. You're not an orphan. You're a son. Okay, we baptized him four weeks ago. Michael. Struggling. He forgot. It's real quick to forget because that world will just do this kind of thing. Yeah. And just beat you All up. All day long. All day long. Oh. Non-stop. Day and night. Not a home to work to sleep in. Not a bed to sleep in. Day and night. Just constant. You forget your daughter. I said, you are a son. Wouldn't even look at me when I first started talking to him. By the time I left, he was eye to eye. I'm a son. Okay? He took, we, that's why we're called to gather together, yeah. Yeah. to be encouraged so that we remember, right. so that we can rub elbows and look like each other, so that we can look like Christ, so that we are the bride and we are unstained and spotless by the world. The world knows us not like them. Yeah, but the enemy don't want us to get that kind of reinforcement. See, he, so he goes through and goes, he hears this. 
you ain't gotta be one. Who's great? You could be safe for that day around here. Like that, you ain't gotta go there. You can still be safe. You know, you can read your book. You can you can watch it on. You can just say the prayer, and, and eventually you'll go to heaven. Nope. Hello, you're missing out on the greatest part that there is. You're missing out on the greatest part there is, which is not going to heaven one of these days. That's the bonus. It's heaven coming now. Holy right. Spirit dwelling right. within you now, right. and you get to live and walk like Jesus. Matthew, Mark 16, 17, and 18. These signs follow them that believe. Right. If you believe, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, because if you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you if you've got a Bible app on your phone. <laughs> I do. Nope. So, these signs follow them that believe. So, if you believe, these are the signs that follow. So, you do a little checklist, and you say, "Well, let's see, let's see, if, let's see if these are, let's see if these identify in my life." Okay, ready? Okay, put your Bible. No. They will cast out demons in my name. Amen. Amen. Uh, and they will speak in new languages. Amen. And they will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Right. They Amen. will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Not, not maybe, Amen. not sometimes, not five out of ten, not, not nine out of ten. Time. All the time. All the time. Amen. I'm going to get tested with the snake one. <laughs> well, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a snake. You might be able to walk in to stop six and walk out all right. Yeah. With me? Yeah. Or the trails or, you know. Or the trails or whatever. Yeah. Okay? It doesn't necessarily mean a slithering little snake guy. There are things in life Sometimes. that happen and you go, wow, I, I, that's really cool. I made it through that because of Jesus. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. So, these, the, the new life that we're supposed to have is the bride because we have died to self. So I'm talking to this guy today. I'm talking to Michael today. Um, I usually don't use names, but I already gave it away. Um, I told him, I said, you know why I can't go back to my old life? And I told you all this before. You know why I can't go back to my old life? Because there's no old life to go back to. Right. That's right. When I died to self and I put myself in the ground and buried it, that's what you do with dead people, just for the record. You put dead people in the ground, and then what do they do when they've laid there long enough? From dust we came. That's we got they rot. Yeah. So my old life has rotted to the point that I can't go back to it because there's nothing to go back to. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And he said, how quick does that happen? I said, well, for me, it took a really long time. But I'm telling you, the longer, the harder you press in, the faster it happens. So a little formaldehyde on the old life, a little bit of bleach, and stir a little, you know, whatever. I don't know the really recipe for that. I'm not good at it. Like some um, so, but we can get rid of that old life and commit to walking with Jesus, okay? Sometimes you fake it till you make it. Sometimes you say you're a son or a daughter and you don't feel like it yet. But I'm here to tell you, if you're born again, you're a son or a daughter. You are. You're no longer an orphan. But our job, pure religion is this, to take care of the widows and the orphans, which is why I will talk until they won't let me talk anymore. Yeah. Amen. Period. You need my phone, you're going to see a Bible app, you're going to shoot me. Guess what? Check you fools later. I'm going to be in heaven. Somebody else is going to have to take the mantle. Yeah. But we don't have that situation here in America yet. Yeah. But it will be here. Yes, yes, it right? will. But in the meantime, let's understand this. Let's really look at this. Why are we sharing the gospel with everybody we run into? Why are we sharing the hope of Jesus Christ? Because they are lost. Lost people break my heart. Yes, amen. The Father's gifted me with the ability to look at somebody and see them the way he sees them. Oh. Solomon asked for wisdom. David asked to know God's heart. Yeah. I am grateful that the Father has given me. If I could pick something, this would be it. To see people the way he sees them. Somebody needs to know your value. That's right. Is that right? I know your value. I'm going to share it with you until I am blue in the face until you get it. Because yes. everybody in here ought to be walking around, oh my goodness, on fire for the Lord. If you have hung out with me, 
You need to be on fire for Jesus. Because I promise you I rubbed off on you. I promise you did too. Look at this girl right here. Come here. Say, say this if you need to say. Come here. Y'all know this girl, right? Y'all know her. Y'all remember her. First, I want to give honor and glory to Jesus. Amen. Because I am privileged to be a daughter in Christ. Oh. I'm just going to stand right here, Mr. Darren. He's a little deaf, and I can be loud enough for all of us. I had an encounter this morning, and it, it, I don't know what you call it a dream, a epiphany. Uh, vision, I don't know what you can call it. This is not a planned thing, guys, okay? It's about three words that the Spirit has put on me, and I got to have to come here to share this with you today. And there were unity. I get goosebumps too. Oh, come on. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. But it's unity, it's baptism, and it's choice. Okay? Grace. Unity. Grace. That's it. Because that's what I'm taking to the scripture. Jump Sorry, my bad. Why are you going to be quiet? Love my pastor. You drink me well. That's what that. Now, if I talk too fast, please, everybody just do my kisses. So give me a sign. The one more play. Oh, I got Jesus in me, but you know, I still got the old self kicked in now. Y'all know who I am. Y'all ain't, ain't nothing new. I am y'all. Y'all, it's me. Yeah. I am a living, breathing testimony. For my today. Yes, amen. 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 I just want to challenge with anybody that can say they see me in the wrong spot, with the wrong crowd, with the wrong anything in the last three months or so. Amen. Anybody, because you know we talk. Okay, we fool everybody. Now, three months before that, it was on. Are you kidding me? And I just got baptized last year. I want you to understand that. I made that choice last year on Dallas Bay of Thomas. I'll do high sick Downing Thomas. The days of Downing, Downing Thomas. But anyway, as a church, as a family, as a congregation, I look at my brothers and sisters' sides and I see me the way I was. And God ain't knowing me yet. I can't sit up here and fix y'all because I'm still trying to fix me. I can't fix anything. My father fixes me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I have a beautiful heart. I have a moldable, plain spirit that he holds every single day. Yes. And I shine like a new king. Yeah. Yeah. I hold my head up. Yeah. They yeah. call me what they want to call me. Because at the end of the day, it's not what's going to call me, it's what I'm going to answer to. Yeah. Yeah. I am the daughter of Christ. Yes. And we have to have this unity, people. Yeah. We have to be so tight and so strong in the way we think and our belief system has to be according to each other, which is our father. Because when you become a daughter of Christ. We are blood brothers and sisters. Yes, now, again, let me make this point. I'm not separate from y'all. I'm not distant from y'all. I'm the same God. Yeah. And when I was out there, oh yeah, we look just like, and I look at some of you. And that's not a judgment, that's observance. I'm making a statement to you. However, I need a strong man. Can a strong man reach me today? Can a strong man reach me? Any man. Oh, look at that. King, come on. King, can you get your Bible? I know you got a Bible app. Go ahead. Put the Bible app. I'm going to give you the scripture. Romans 6, chapter 6. And it's going to be 4. It's 4 to, what a minute? 7, 6 and 7 to 4 to 14. And it's talking about when Jesus turned around and as we turn around and we become baptized, we die with him. Can you get that scripture? Can you read that verse? Romans 6, 17. Yeah, yes. I got it. 6, 17. Wait, what is this? It's six or seven. It starts at six or seven. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not. I'm not Pastor Mary, but I'm gonna grow up and be just like my pastor. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just saying. Saying. Right. Yeah. And it's chapter six, and it starts in chapter six. Of, it started. In our cha chapter six. It goes down to fourteen. So it's about three or four paragraphs. All right. All right. Are you such a good reader? You know you're not. That's you just start. Stand up. Stand up and read after. Show right. honor. Yeah. Show yeah. honor yeah. to our father. Yeah. 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 Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Yes. For therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Yes. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Give me right where you were planted together. What's another word for planted? United. Yeah, what you praise me, guys. I just want to let y'all know that. Please continue. Together in the likeness of his death, 
we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. What? Yes. Yes. What's that word, resurrection? What does that mean? It's just raised from the dead. Raised from the dead. Come on. We're not alone. Go ahead, please finish, brother. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth. Excuse me, right there. That's stripping off the old. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Yes. But he that is dead is freed from sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, that's it. Free from sin. Now keep going, brother. I got to get one more paragraph. Now, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Amen. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more demand over him. No dominion. No power. No power over him. Yes. Nothing. Okay. When they live, when they die, he died of the sin once. But in that he live, he lives unto God. Keep going. One more time. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto yeah. the Who are we But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Grace. Yes. Amen. Grace. Because we no longer walk under the law. We walk under grace. And as Pastor would say, she treats me so well. Now that's not to get out of jail free card. But what that is is, when you become baptized, when you die with him, and you have that belief, I believe you, Jesus. I want to be with you. I want the life that you have planned for me from the beginning. You know what I'm saying to you? I want every one of my sisters and brothers to have that life. And I know it's attainable. It, it's achievable because he loves you. You know why you know he loves you? Because he gave you something awesome. He gave you a phenomenal power, each and every one of you in your meat, every one of you. Regardless of rich, poor, you got you got a record, you don't got a record, you murder somebody, you kick somebody, you kill the I don't care what you do, how you do. <laughs> I can't cast no stones because I asked him myself. Still a sinner, but amen. By the grace and not by the law. He knows I still slip and make mistakes. Well, I can share a minute, you get on the wrong side of it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Y'all know who I am, don't act like you don't. You know. <laughs> but I can be real and honest about that. But I strive to do that 90%. I used to do 10%, and the 90% I was over here doing my thing. You know, over here. Y'all know how we get down. And I said, we, I didn't say just me. All right, or that they call it okay. Because, you know, heaven forbid if I was that mistake. You know what I'm saying? I was doing it. But today, I strive. And I make that 90%. And that 10% still kind of sticks to me. If I'm not perfect, you, you look at me, you can judge me any way you want to. It's okay because it's not your judgment I'm worried about today. Amen. Right. Right. He gave us a phenomenal power of choice. Yeah. And I want to tell you about this phenomenal power of choice. You can choose to wake up in the morning and influence somebody's life positively, or you can choose to wake up and say, hey, oh, no matter. It's your choice. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because his choice was get up on that cross for me, ask me, and take that beat. Oh, excuse me. Come on, Chris. Come on. I can't stand her, y'all. Sometimes I'm going to go, I love my Come sister, on. my pastor, and my. Sometimes I just want to choke her out. I'm going to take her out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love right there and then he said, oh, yeah. But he gave you that same choice. Now, I'm a little bit real quick because I got two minutes, and that's why I try to drive. So, two minutes, I hope it's time. Yeah, you're about I'm six minutes into it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> However, when I took and got in that a year ago, I was ready. I just felt it. I just knew I was ready. But you see, I fell short because I went to take my wheel back. See, it's got tight, got stroke, got, you know, made me crazy, made me worry. I took my wheel back when I, if I have a job and I got win. Oh, I got all the world. I got all the faith in the world. And my rent's going to be paid this month. If I got that job and got that money to do it. But what happens with the faith when I turn around and ain't got that job? Right. I ain't got right. nobody around me saying, hey, I got to fix that rent for you. I got you. Okay. Well, that's called being down Thomas. You know what down Thomas syndrome is? Do y'all make sense of that? Yeah, down okay. Thomas. Yes. Well, I'm asking you today, making a choice, that's the number choice, use it from your heart. Search yourself with it. I'm not asking you to believe. I'm asking you to receive. Right. Yeah. Yes. You have Christ today in your heart. Yes. Yes. And you have that downtown syndrome. That's okay. That's okay. We'll work through it. Because it's about choice. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. When Pastor Steph here is around, 
about telepathy, hey, this is a real eye-opening experience, and baby, we got to be awake like a thief in the night. You know yes, so yeah. We're not promised tomorrow. Right. Yes. Right. Not even a little bit. Right. You're going to be on the fence, you're going to be off the fence. Well, if you don't have that relationship, if you do not have that unity, if you do not have that conviction of who you want to be, because it can happen with Jesus. I'm telling you, it can happen because you know what? Ain't you making yourself over? It's Jesus making you over. Right. Take you right. right from where you're at. He doesn't want you because he wants you to be. He wants you right where you're at because he accepts you for who you are. Yes. He makes you who he wants you to be later yes. on as you learn to develop that relationship. So I challenge, that's a challenge. And first one say, go have an open smile. I got you at the church. I'm going to let you know. <laughs> I want you to search yourself. And that's why I want, you, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to envision me. I'm going to be tall. And you say, I got a man's voice, but you know, my, my father said that's an authority voice, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to get a picture, envision that. Please, close your eyes. This is serious, guys. Close your eyes. And as you hear my voice, I want you to imagine that I am Jesus talking to you right now, talking to you, my son, my daughter. How long have I waited? How long I cried for you? How long do I sit up? I put people in your life, put circumstances, allow circumstances to happen to you that hurts me because I want to be reunited with you as my child. I want you to accept me. But if you can't do that, can you come? Can you come and have the, even the tiniest bit of faith as a mustard grain that can move a mountain? Would you be that down Thomas and ask yourself, well, am I ever going to stand for something or am I going to fall for anything? Because if you don't stand on the rock, then you're beneath the rock. And what good am I to do? Would you be willing to take that step of faith today? Would you take that down Thomas step of faith? I'm not asking you to earn your way, but he's not asking you that. He's not asking you, you got to get cleaned up and, you know, get the bling bling up and have a little few dollars in your pocket. That's how he's asking you. Would you allow me, would you accept me right now today, today, in this minute, in this moment, would you turn around and reunite to me? Would you unite yourself with me? So I want to ask you, this is, this is the prayer for the homeless. Homeless prayer, that's what they called it back in the back when I first came back. I was out here for three years. Hey, I want to be, my heart was for a month and a half. It's here right now. But look at the changes that I need in the last three months. Amen? Shine like me. I, I want you to resemble me. I want, when I look in your eyes, I don't want to see death. I don't want to see chaos and confusion. I want to see Jesus' spirit shining to your eyes. I want you shining like a brand new baby. Yes. So I want y'all to be, because I got to ask you this question. Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired of the same old cycle? Yeah. Aren't you tired of the same old thing? Ain't nothing new because you already know what it's going to be. Because we stay where it's comfortable because it's familiar. Can we take that step of thousand times faith out? We just take that one step out. And you know what, Jesus? I am going to make the phenomenal choice of faith and take the small mustard grain seed of trust with you. Because in the scriptures and songs, it says that he will prove to me. So I want you to repeat this. I don't want you to repeat I don't know about the hands up on my back. Don't get your hands up nothing. I just want you to ask yourself this couple of few questions. And then I want you to say this prayer to me if you would please. And if you're sincere and if you're me, I don't want nobody to put nobody on that. It ain't nobody's business. I'll let you know that between you and our Father, okay? Father God, I'm tired. I'm so, so tired. I'm tired of feeling less than. I'm tired of feeling that I can't never measure up because of my sins. That's the lie from the enemy. The enemy put you there. Jesus did not. You did not. By the choices that you made. And I hate the choices I made to you. I want to belong to you. I want to be a child of God. And I am willing to step out and take that leap of faith today. And I want you to prove yourself in my life. I want to be your son and your daughter. And I'm going to believe on your promises. Amen. Now please stay in your seats. If anyone's heart was touched, if anybody feels like today is the day where you 
to take that piece of paper and see what you can do with it during the rest of your year. See what you can do. The drug is right down the corner for you. You know, you can always go right back where you was right now. There's always way for you. If you ever get tired and decide you want to go back to where you start. Okay, you be uncomfortable and take that one of these down If you are willing to do that, would you stand up? Anybody. Don't worry about what you next thing next thing doing. You want to take that big effect, baby. Would you be willing to stand up today? Are you willing to stand up for something? Get tired of falling in the everywhere. Are you willing to turn around and get in that water today if it comes to you? Would you be willing to do it? You gotta be scared. I know there's two. I know there's two of you. Anyone today? All right. Well, I will continue to pray, pray for you. You continue to pray for me. And I'm telling you, Jesus ain't done what you get. Sometimes you gotta stay in that stuff and just live it long. Y'all all got to hit somewhere. I just pray to Jesus that before you hit, he catches you. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, I'm here to tell you that there's two of you that did that. There's two of you that said, "I want to take that leap of faith." That's okay. We're doing it. I know. Amen. We're going. We're going down. We're going down to the river afterwards. Aaron. Aaron's already there. Aaron's already there. When we're done today, we're going to go down to the river. We're going to baptize him in water. We're going to baptize him in the spirit.
mom. That's like being really loud in my ear and swinging me around. Sorry. Um, you know, we, we I, I challenged you guys last week to take some of these things, what we do in our in our schedule, and hand them out to people. Take five and give them out to five people. Let's go fishing. Yes. We're fishing for souls. We're fishers of men. We want to. If we're fishers of men, we ought to smell like fish. Amen. Amen. Sounding out of big cat fishing. Oh, whatever. Trinity. Whatever. Five. Take five and hand them out. And next week, of the five that you handed out, maybe one will come. And if not, then you go back to them and go, hey, we missed you. And God's got a plan for your life, and you're a son or a daughter. Come on with it. Uh, birthday list needs list. I'm going to close this in prayer. We're going to eat. I'm going to give you over there. Okay, we'll, okay we'll, we'll play while we eat. Yes. May I um, <laughs> ask that you guys pray for Pixie yeah. and her... Uh, Absolutely. Great. Just think about this. Everybody got at least one person in their life that we can be praying for that for. You hear that? For her sanity and the trials that she's going through. I mean, I can name 15 people in my life, but we all got one. Right? Amen. So let's be intentional. Let's be intentional in finding out what it is to look like a son, not, not act like a son or a daughter. Okay? God's not interested in being a complication. He sure is. He is interested in the heart change. Father, I thank you for today. Um, your plan is so perfect. Your word is so amazing. And Jesus, you are the word, and we are humbled to be in your presence today, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. It was cool to walk in and feel the presence of you, Lord. to see that growth. Thank you for every person that's here that came today, that came for something, that they received it. And Holy Spirit, if they don't got a Bible app on their phone, chop, chop. Let us have Bible over Candy Crush. Let us have Bible over Poker. Let us have Bible over Bingo. Let us spend more time with you than we do anything else because we don't want to incorporate you into our life. We want to surrender our life to you. Amen. Thank you for the change in all of our lives. Everybody in our community has changed, and I thank you for that, Lord. Yes. It has been amazing to see it continue to grow in us and change us, sanctify us, and set us apart. Sozo us, Lord. Save us. Save, heal, deliver made whole, kept safe and sound. Let us know what it's like to walk as a son and a daughter. I thank you for that change. I thank you that our free will becomes your will when we die to self. And that your plan is so perfect and your blessings are so awesome and amazing that we're humbled just to be called your kids. So use us. Pour us out like a drink offering. Remind us of that grace and mercy that we've received that it's new every day and the forgiveness is not just a card to go ahead and do what we want and then ask for it later. It's seeing who we were and who we are now. Amen. Because your love is so transforming. <coughs> there really aren't human American words to describe it. Um, Jesus, you're amazing for the food that we have today. Fill our stomachs and fill our souls with this word. And, and thank you for the needless things. And thank you for everybody that came. Lord, we reach out to those that are not here today and those that are in our minds and our hearts that need you, that are lost. Woo them and call them to you. Show up and, and, and be you. And they will fall in love. Help us to encounter you. And then take that encounter to other people. I praise you. You are worthy to be praised. Father, you are, we bow at your feet. We bless you and we honor you. We praise you. 
We want our lives to be a reflection of that in Jesus. We are so indebted to the thing that you did for us. That one thing is eternally transforming. Holy Spirit, thank you that you live in us and that you um, guide us and direct us and, and discipline us and speak through us and heal. We can't heal if it's not for you. Yes. We can't we can't make ears open if it's not for you. I praise you because you do those things and we get to be a part of it. Um, thank you for everything today, Lord. We bow before that great throne and your robe fills the temple. I pray all this in these powerful name above all names, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Karen's got a cute little video of inviting somebody to church that will show you after everybody gets sitting down, get your meal, y'all go line up, get some, it's good. Good soup today. Good. Yeah. Thank you.